first, let's have an intro. I don't know how our theme song goes. <laughs> I, could, I could play it for you again in my headphones if you want. I could pull it up if I want. We'll just pretend that there's a theme song here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Actually, that might be better than what I composed. You certainly have more gusto. That's a lot of gusto. Was... That's like lots of gusto. I need to put more gusto in my recordings. More gusto. Hi, welcome to Liminal Limits, a show about borders, boundaries, and edge cases. I'm Sarah Chikazol. And I'm Adam Sacklerides, and this week we'll be exploring Gibraltar. So, uh, Sarah, let's let's describe for the viewers, not viewers, listeners, in your mind's eye, what does Gibraltar look like and how does it relate to Spain and all this? Uh, Gibraltar, uh, as one might have heard about as the Rock of Gibraltar, is kind of a giant rock near the southern tip of Spain. Uh, it is actually a peninsula. Uh, it is one half of the Pillars of Hercules, which are large rocky formations on either side of the strait separating the Atlantic Ocean from the Mediterranean Sea. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is a British overseas territory, um, just stuck down there at the bottom of Spain. So there's so there's Spain, uh, and across, across the way from Spain, uh, south of Spain, uh, there's the entire <laughs> continent of Africa. And... Um, there's uh, Gibraltar on one side and the uh, other pillar on the other. The Strait of Gibraltar is, I think, about eight miles at its at its most na- eight miles wide at its most narrowest. Most narrowest. I keep inventing words. I'm sorry. And uh, did I hear something about British imperialism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the I I kind of looked into it. I was like, you know, I'm I'm curious as to why Britain owns this rock, and the answer is. British imperialism. So they saw they saw this big rock that juts out of the ocean. It's um the rock and its uh, surrounding area is only about like two square mi- two or three square miles. And most of it's a giant rock. Like it's not a, not a lot of space for living unless you're like a cliffside dweller. Although the rock does have a whole lot of caves in it, uh, some natural and a lot man-made. Uh, through the various centuries that it has been inhabited, it is uh, there is often been some kind of fort there because it has some military or strategic importance because if you roll back through the centuries of the middle ages and uh and beyond um spain and the preceding countries and britain and many other surrounding nation states have been constantly in various states of war or alliance with each other so having a point like this near a strait that controls access to the Mediterranean has seemed to the British like a very strategic place to own for a very, very long time. How long? Just forever? You know, I going back to at least 1600, 1625, I believe, there was a war between England, Britain. I'm, I'm not sure what nation statehood it was at at the time, uh, but the Anglo-Spanish War. Uh, mm-hmm. They were definitely thinking about it then. It has gone through many hands. It has been in what we would now call Spanish hands since the Castilians won it back from the Moors in uh, 1462. There has been a fort there for a long time, but it wasn't a super important strategic position. When the British finally got hold of it, it was not even their first choice of a strategic position. Uh It was during the War of Spanish Succession. The Archduke Charles uh, was attempting to invade Spain, and the Dutch and British were on the side of the Archduke, and they were trying to capture a port. They they failed to attempt the first port, uh, and then were like, well, how about Gibraltar? It doesn't seem particularly well defended. Which, for a thing that is like a giant rock, you would think there would be a good place to have a fort, but no, it was mostly a village. There wasn't a lot of great defenses there, and the Dutch and British took it over in the name of Archduke Charles. Good job, Charles. Charles the Third. Yes, Charles the Third, King of Castile and Aragon. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't realize he has like a full. T- that's a that's quite a title there. Good job, Charles the Third. I mean, he never got to be king of Castile and Aragon. I believe he lost, but uh, but they made a good go of it. <laughs> So, yeah, these two navies invaded and bombed the heck out of the town until they successfully invaded and kind of looted and 
burned the place. Oh, no, they probably didn't burn it, but they definitely looted everything possible of value out of the churches and uh, some personal possessions. And the local inhabitants were not very impressed with this. No, no, they would, they would not. Uh, even though you, you have, you have written here, uh, promised town inhabitants safety. Was that before or after the, <laughs> was that uh, before it, or after the terrorism? Uh, you know, it could have been after. <laughs> I know that they definitely, it would have been after they had bombed the heck out of them and, <laughs> oh, and captured them. Uh, it, it does seem to be that this had happened in a previous engagement where the, the leaders had insisted on, oh yes, we're going to take this town and we're going to be all well and civilized. And um, the general rank and file were not quite on board with this, you know, civilized, not raping and looting. And so uh, unpleasantness happened because war is terrible. Why do people go to war? It's awful. And for the rank and file, for the vast majority of history, one of the only benefits of being in the military is the ability to steal stuff from other people and be rewarded for it. Oh, what is that called when the cops do it? I forget. Um <laughs> Uh, oh. Civil forfeiture? Oh, yes. Civil forfeiture. <laughs> yes. Civil forfeiture. It's the best part of war. <laughs> uh, in any case, when uh, these this military force took it over from mossy villagers who lived there, it wasn't a super military place at the time. Uh, after a few days of chaos, uh, there was a promise, oh, no, everything's fine now. You can stay here. And uh, most of the inhabitants did not think this was a good deal and they packed up and moved they took things like the town relics and formed the town of looks like san rock where uh, a lot of those gibraltar relics still remain to this day san rock is spanish for saint rock i guess it's a saint boulder you know if you will that could be a joke that could also be true i don't speak enough <laughs> no, spanish no. no i think i was joking but now i'm starting to wonder <laughs> Um, no, San Rock, R-O-Q-U-E. Uh, I don't think, I don't think that's how you spell, I don't think that's how you spell boulder <laughs> in, uh, in Spanish. So, uh, some sources say that the villagers were so happy to move because they believed that the Spanish forces would take it back soon and they could move back. Uh, and it turned out that was not the case. Uh, this was in, uh, 1704 that this happened. And uh, Spain has still not succeeded in getting Gibraltar back. Well, they have tried several times. Mm, dear. I keep saying the British had it as it's, it was originally British and Dutch in concert uh, succeeded after the 11th siege of Gibraltar. Uh, so you can see this has been under contention for a long time. <laughs> but uh, the 12th siege of Gibraltar is a few months after this. Uh, when the Spanish tried to take it back and did not succeed. Again. They gave up after six months of siege. Then this is about the time when the British sort of quietly started to act like they owned the place, even though it's still officially in the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah we're holding it for, for the Archduke, and we're just going to, like, move more of our stuff in here and encourage anyone who is not British to leave. Queen Anne actually did declare Gibraltar a free port, which is... Not so subtle when they still officially, Queen Anne had no rights to this place. But she's declaring it anyway. Oh yeah, she declared it anyway, and nobody told her not to. <laughs> At least uh, it has not made it uh, this far to that anybody made a big deal about this. Uh, the governor would, was a British officer. I'm not sure if it was military or civilian governorship at this time. Uh, but the, the governorship was held by the British. And a few years later, they just sort of got secret orders to just boot out anybody who was not British. This was so that uh, they could, when eventually somebody got around to arguing whether or not Britain owned this little bit of land, uh, if only British citizens lived there, they would have a better claim to sovereignty. It does help if uh, you're already there, right? It's better to ask for yeah. forgiveness. And possession is nine-tenths of the law. And war is nine-tenths of civil forfeiture? Is that? Yeah, okay. It's all, yeah, it all goes back to that. That seems about right. And that turned out to be the case. The Treaty of Utrecht in 1713, Britain officially was allowed to keep Gibraltar and everybody celebrated. Yay. I mean, the Spanish put it under siege again uh, 10 years later, 15 years later. How many, siege, how many sieges are we talking now? 14, 15? Uh, this, this is only the 13th siege of Gibraltar. Uh, um, oh, geez, it, we're not even there yet. Okay. It lasted about five months, <laughs> after which uh, the Spanish built a line of forts to better attack the British from. 
so that they could have a better go at it next time. That's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're now we're talking about um, you know infrastructure. That's that's good. It's, yep. I feel like this is a better base to start with. Then in starting in 1779, we had the Great Siege of Gibraltar. Other the 14th Siege of Gibraltar, but it was the Great Siege because it lasted for years. Oh my God! About four years they had it under siege while the British were busy with the American Revolutionary War. Uh, the Spanish thought they would. Uh, take this small opportunity to just get their little rock back. This is impressive because there are more sieges of Gibraltar than I thought there were. There's some, there are more sieges of Gibraltar than there were like French revolutions. I'm <laughs> genuinely impressed at this point. Yeah, I genuinely do not understand how it held out for so long. Uh, this is part of the time when uh, it, an incredible number of tunnels and fortifications were dug into the rock which is, I believe, limestone. There is a bunch of natural caverns so it is well designed for having a bunch of tunnels through it but uh even so like how they could have held out under this siege for years um just boggles my mind that they that uh this relatively small settlement just managed to hold on but in the end uh the siege was lifted and there was spain still did not succeed not too long after that Spain sort of conceded and they did destroy the fortifications, which uh, the town of La Ligne de la Concepcion. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry if you speak Spanish at all. My, <laughs> Sp- my Spanish accent is dreadful. I'm sorry for doing that to you. But La Ligne is was built on the wreckage of the line of fortification, and that is now the town on the Spanish side of the border with Gibraltar. The actual line of the border itself does seem to be a little bit in dispute. Certainly, the peninsular part does belong to British protectorate, but um, the British did build a fence to ease sentry duty, and the Spanish insist that it is on Spanish land, and the British insist that it is on Gibraltar land. And I believe that disagreement uh, continues to this day as to whether or not that is which side of the border that fence falls on. Right, and they, they so they had this 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 area that was kind of like a demilitarized zone in the middle for a while, right? It's like, oh, this is this is this is just gonna be you. You'll be over there. You have your uh, you have your line over there. We have our line over here. And there's this this uh, isthmus. Is that the right word? This isthmus. Yes. Uh, is sort of like a is sort of just a another world where neither of us really stakes claim to it, except. In nineteen is it nineteen thirty eight? Yes. Uh, <laughs> while Spain is busy fighting a civil war, Britain builds an airport on this supposedly neutral ground and says, "Oh, look, there's an there's an airport there." Like they just didn't consult. They're just like, "Oh, uh, just they didn't notice." They're just bricks, and all of a sudden, there's an airport there. Yeah, magic. It's amazing what you can do uh, when your opponent is looking the other way. <laughs> so, General Franco, the uh, former dictator of Spain, uh, who at this point. Uh, after the Civil War was over, he was in control, and he was not impressed at all uh, with the British control of this, uh, especially after Queen Elizabeth visited Gibraltar. And that did not go over well from the Spanish side, and Franco renewed his claim of Spanish sovereignty. In 1967, there was a referendum on whether Gibraltar should pass into Spanish hands or remain British, and uh, the vote was greater than 90 per- 99% in favor of staying british so you're you're saying it was very divisive and no <laughs> not at all like everybody was not, like no not we're, a- we're fine and there there were a couple reasons I, I was curious i was like that was really high it, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't just british people who lived there there are there are people from varying nationalities and ethnicities who lived in gibraltar so it's not like everybody was like yeah home good old england uh, but keep in mind that spain had just finished a civil war and uh, had very poor economic situation at the same at that current time. And there's also the fact that Britain may officially have the sovereignty over Gibraltar, but they're real far away. So Gibraltar mostly gets to do their own thing. <laughs> and if they were in Spanish hands, there's a lot of indication that control over them would be a lot stricter. And they decide, mm, no, we're we're happy the way we are. So they don't mind being a uh, a British uh, territory. Is territory the official term for this? I think the word is protectorate. Protectorate. That's... So in 1969, Gibraltar was officially given self-government, which made things even better for them to want to stay nominally as a British protectorate because hey, we're we're basically our own country without having to deal with all the 
terrible business of foreign affairs or having our own currency. Mm-hmm. Franco responded to this by closing the land border for 13 years. So there was there was some pouting on this on the Spanish side, is what you're saying. 13 years of this little isthmus. Like <laughs> I I I have been to Gibraltar. I have watched from La Línea to Gibraltar and imagining that just being a no you cannot cross this fence for over a decade listen if you hop in a boat and then take a short ride I won't tell anybody (laughs) (laughs) so in 2002 there was another referendum uh, which was would, was not as unanimous as the first time. Oh, there's there's doubt. It was only about 98% in favor of staying British. <laughs> so, so they're still mostly okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I think it's the fact that they there's they have self-government. The the queen has officially said she will never sell them mm-hmm. off to another country. Um it seems like a pretty good deal to me. At, at this point, the only the only thing that they're like really giving up is if uh, if for some reason World War Three started and uh, and uh, the UK was like, well, actually, we want to put an army base here. They'd have to be like, well, I guess that's part of the contract. Yeah, well, maybe it's not part of the contract. I haven't actually read, oh, okay. the, Sorry. read the paperwork, so that's getting deleted. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is true. Maybe they could uh, just turn it back into a fortress. There are some very lovely caves there. Have you been hiking in these caves? I have. Ooh, that sounds awesome. I, d- I have a picture of... It's obviously not a very good picture because it was taken in a cave. <laughs> but uh, there's a theater in one of the caves uh-huh. that at some point in the 19th century, somebody thought it would be a great idea to build a theater in here. That's amazing. We should, can, we, can we put that in the show notes? Yeah, we can absolutely add that to the show notes. I will... You should look, you should look at this picture. It's pretty great. I'm assuming. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a kind of blurry, dark picture, uh, not not taken with a particularly great digital camera, but it's definitely a theater in a dark, <laughs> a very dark theater. You've never seen a dark theater like this, though, in a cave, in a rock, like this. So what I did not realize at the time when I, when I crossed this border on my own two feet is that there is still a little bit of tension uh, between Spain and Gibraltar. Awkward. Um, there has been there was apparently a time where there was some like uh telecommunications restrictions basically where obviously Gibraltar does not have a very large base to have a lot of its own resources a lot of things must be piped in from the outside world mm-hmm. so things like telephone connections and as it turns out like telephone exchange numbers area codes i'm not sure what they're what they are in in Europe uh but uh, uh that sort of thing is still controlled by spain so there was some argument over how much they could get to control and i guess how fast their internet could be but uh gibraltar has in recent years i think around 2006 they wrote themselves a constitution and declared that they were no longer a british colony oh so they're did they declared it and did anybody ratify it or how does this get officially followed through on i'm pretty sure the gibraltarians ratified it (laughs) But um, they declared it, and was anybody paying attention, I guess, is what I'm asking. As as far as I can tell, there is no official word from the British as to whether or not they agree uh, with Gibraltar's non-colonial state. It's not even on their docket. (laughs) They said, we're independent, and uh, the parliament said, I'm sorry, did you say something? (laughs) because <laughs> i was not i was not paying attention so nowadays uh gibraltar does more tourism than military strategic positions mm-hmm. but it is uh it remains interesting to me that there is still that tiny bit of demilitarized zone of uh disagreed boundary there is a fence there but that might not actually be the border and um <laughs> another another weird thing along and they, they've built this airport on this isthmus and um there's not enough room on this isthmus for the <laughs> i just i just love looking at this map there's not enough room on this isthmus for a complete uh, landing strip so of course they built out you know a little bit they've had to do some uh filling in of land over here uh into the ocean but the weirdest part about this airport is that the only road going in going to and from Spain to Gibraltar crosses right over this landing strip. Yeah. And so when they, uh, I was reading this, when a plane is landing, they will actually like put cones across the road to be like, no, no, don't cross the landing strip. There's going to be a plane soon. Yeah. You actually, you have to stand there and wait for the, 
plain crossing and then and you know and then the arms come up and ding 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 oh ding. they have oh they have arms they no, don't they, it's even better than cones okay i is... don't think they actually have the train co- crossing arms they just they, they you just have to wait until the plane is done crossing <laughs> and then it's like okay now you can go <laughs> that is so peculiar um is it a busy airport that or it was it like happening all the time and so it was constant traffic back and forth stopped up i don't i don't think it was constant but it hmm. It was definitely a, a uh, I know that when we crossed it, I have videos of watching the plane go by as we were waiting to cross into Gibraltar. I do not have any videos going the other way, and I do not remember if that is because I was bored of the idea or if we really were able to just cross without waiting. Well, you just, you just didn't know that you would have to document the experience so we could use it later <laughs> yeah. on this podcast. If I had known that uh, 15 years later I would be on a podcast about borders, I would have tried to take a picture of the precise border. As it is, I just have a picture of me standing and waiting for the plane to cross and <laughs> taking a picture of the Rock of Gibraltar. It's, uh, it's a pretty great rock, though, uh, and now mm-hmm. I want to go there. You know, I want to go see this Rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, uh, and I will I will show you my pictures. I will not show you all my pictures because I took way too many pictures, but I will I will share some of them, and they will be on the website. Uh, speaking of the website, um, if you enjoy our podcast, Liminal Limits, please check out our website at liminallimitspodcast.com. Also, uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Liminal Limits. And if you gave us a nice review on iTunes, you would be the best person in the world. Um, So uh, thanks for subscribing and blah, 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 blah. Um, Until next time, uh, see ya. Au revoir.